I feel like I'm at my best state in the wild. Living in British Columbia, we are super fortunate to have such a vast landscape of plentiful bounty. It's crazy the amount of opportunity you can pursue in one year's time. Different fish, whether that be in a lake, in a river, down to the amount of big game animals we have in BC. I have so much at my hand. I have two deep freezes. One is for fish, while the other is for big game animals or red meat. I call myself an opportunist. I take every opportunity as a chance to fill that freezer to the brim. And that is a hardship, all the way from front to back. That's not a one day process. I would rather have a hardship and put a lot of effort into something to know exactly what I'm eating. Well, subsistence was something I would say that I didn't know I was doing, that the word to put to it. We do everything within our power to try and harvest our own food rather than buy our own food. We try to make as much out of the area or the wilderness, your garden, whatever it is, to be able to live off of in my life and uh, my family's life, Scotty, Fraser, and I. We do that on the regular, daily almost, I would say. Let's go. So here we are in winter, dead of winter. A lot of uh, ice fishing happens for Scotty and I. So now it's just a matter of trying to hone in and find the fish. Scott phrased it out for a nap. Now we have to seriously fish while well, we have maybe half an hour, maybe 45 minutes if we're lucky. Fishing is where my heart's at. I think that you can get a ton of value out of your basic fishing license every year. You could absolutely fill your freezer and be feeding your family all year long. So as they mill along the bottom, they get in their paths. So you kind of want to keep rotating spots, find out where that path is, and then you'll get those schools that come through and there'll be some action, and then they might move along for 10 minutes or something, but they circle right back around and all of a sudden you get that action again. That's kind of what you want to find. Here we go. And be gen gentle with them. Gotta get his nose up here. Here he is. Yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Yee Three and a half pounder. This is a beautiful specimen. Sweet. We got fish here. Okay, let's slip you in. Okay, I got here. I'll keep my eye on the, on the tip, the rod. I would say one of the biggest things that Scotty and I want to bring Fraser into is understanding what's at her hand and how she can control it in the wild. Warm up temp for the kiddo. Knowing where fish comes from, understanding the impacts it can have if you over harvest, or understanding even death off of that, you know? And I absolutely think about how am I going to instill the same amount of passion that Scotty and I have into this kid. Oh. Got a finesse them. Here's a good one. That's a great fish. Here's a good fish. Go, Dad! Woohoo! This is a little lake off the beaten path, just a touch, um, that I know is all brook trout, so we're gonna be going for brookies this afternoon. Fraser's gonna catch her first fish on this little rod and uh, it's gonna be a eight pounder. So not today, <laughs> but in due time.
I think the more you understand about it, the more you become okay with harvesting. Just knowing that we fish stocked lakes that provides us opportunity to fish them and to harvest them. There's one. Let's go! Woohoo! Look at those colors. These fish are put in here for us to take. You're not taking away from a wild stock that's in decline. In winter, it does become more casual. You know, things become a little more easygoing, but we still utilize every hour we can of sunlight. Although it's less filling of freezers, we fill freezers. Typically, the winter for me spans over the late season of hunting right into snow and freezing weather, which is perfect for ducks. We're out here this morning, bright and early, before there's even a hint of sun showing. So we got a couple buds as well. I think there's six of us roughly, plus the old pooch here. Ready to rip down and get some ducks, fill some freezers. Ready to start. This is actually my first one of the season, so I'm just like itching for it. This field's hit and miss with geese, but we're gonna be getting ducks and stuff, so I'm pretty excited for it. Freya is freaking fired up. 10 minutes till it's game time. It's feeling good. We got a little fog, which is kind of nice because we can be calling. They'll come in and once they can see the deeks, especially the spread and in the slough, we should be having a pretty good day today. So let's just hope they're flying. And if they're flying, I think we got a pretty good chance at uh, making it happen, so. Green heads and a hen. Beautiful. So I'm just gonna do some breasting. So what I like to do, I like to breast them. I'm a big fan of treating them like little steaks. So I just kind of pull, get all the skin right off, like so. I go right down the breastplate here. Cut right down, but you wanna keep it attached to the wing, just like that. So this way, you're showing that this is a mallard. Clean her up at home, trim off the wing, Done deal. When you get to spring, things start shifting into ice off on the lakes where we start chasing trout again, fly fishing, which is a major passion of mine. We start in the low elevation lakes uh, as the ice comes off and I'll literally chase lakes up in elevation. So it's hit the road, we got both boats saddled up. Got all the gear in, a couple motors, electric motors and all the flies the fish can eat. I'm sure we're gonna get on fish. It's gonna be a good day, so I'm stoked. We just got iced off, so big attractants off the top, and then we see what they're feeding on, and we can hone it in from there. So starting with the leech, leech is a good move to go. Uh, these are all sorts of different leeches, your black and perps, your kryptonites, we like to call them, black and reds, uh, wine and dynams, we call them. Ideally, they're gonna just be hungry, zooming around, and they're gonna see something, and they're like, Yup, that looks tasty. Come and hit it and then we'll we'll throw pump them and then from there we can start honing in. Sweet, let's go get them. 
yeah, I think BC has the rep of being the mecca for hunting and for fishing. For the amount that you pay, it's wild how much meat and harvest you can have that you can live off for the year. So we're sitting in about, I would say about seven feet. Judging by how long the anchor took down, I'm guessing we're gonna be casting into about five feet. So what I got is a real heavy leech. I want it to sink fast because when I'm stripping, I want it to jump up and then dive back down. And that's what a leech does. They, they swim through the water like that. So that's how I like to work it. Yee Game time, boys. Oh, and it's a goodie. 10 minutes. Too long. <laughs> All of our tags that get bought, they go right back into a foundation that ends up putting that into the waters or land of some sort within BC. So it's pretty wild, pretty epic. He's running. It's about five pound fish. That's a stalker fish. That's about a, I'm gonna see, he's about five pounds. <laughs> First one down. He's getting the stonker bonker. <laughs> and then I'm going to take this little vial because uh, I'm going to what's called throat pump him and he's going to figure out what's right in his throat and those are things he's actively feeding on right in there. So all you can see in here he's feeding on tiny tiny little shrimp. Little chronomids starting to come off. That's that one in the top. They're coming up to the surface to hatch and then become midges or um, truly, some, there's a lot more biologists that would know a lot more than me, but I know that fish are feeding on them. I can mimic it and I can hit them. What did I say? A good day is two fish, so we're not quite at a good day yet. So every year, I choose to try and add in new lakes or same thing goes with hunting. I try and add in at least two new hunting spots. And the reason being is things change. You know, we deal with climate change and these different things. And there's some that become total staples and they're fantastic. Yay! You gotta be flexible and be willing to change up. It's not always just hit the same lake. I can handle this. This is this is beautiful. We got barely any wind, but enough just to cause a little bit of movement on the flies. I can see swallows are actually sipping up flies over there, so that's perfect. We'll pop out up front here. There's a couple little deep holes I know of, maybe like 20 feet-ish, and then we'll ideally start picking up some fish on the sounder and we can make it happen makes you more of a well-rounded angler or hunter because you have to adapt to change and adapt to different lakes, different depths. You have to adapt to your surroundings. So that's how I roll. We did some depth finding down below, looking for them, and uh, there wasn't much moving deeper. Just feels like they're in the shallows. So we're gonna bomb to the far end of the lake. Hopefully it produces, that's the goal. These waves are uh, throwing me for a loop though. <laughs> the way that it's making that bobber disappear like that. There she goes. <laughs> Got her. <him! laughs> that is what we're talking about. Yeah, buddy. Little one and a halfer. But I think he's a little too small. I'm gonna let him go. To watch that indicator go down is just like, it's wild. I love those kind of moments. Right after. So I'm thankful, truly, that I can capitalize on harvesting fish, knowing that that's the best meat for my family and I. It's wild, it's free. Okay, what I like to do is I like to get things started, cut right riddle on the dorsal, and I kind of come along and I'm scraping along, I can feel the backbone. Once I get to the end, take right on top here, right along the, the ribs there. Voila, I love this part of the process. When you get really good at it, you can go really fast and it makes it very satisfying when you make nice clean long cuts. 
and you know that you're gonna be eating tasty meat real soon. So what I like to do is I like to cook with the skin down first and let it cook its way all the way through. And then I'll end up literally just flipping it, giving it a quick singe, pull it out and enjoy. Oh. <laughs> I don't think you can make it that good in a restaurant. summer you get those nice long hours which create a lot of opportunity to take advantage of. Fish start coming into river systems, salmon start coming in, you can chase red springs. I'm a full working man. I work Monday to Friday, I got to be at the shop for six o'clock. A lot of harvest is actually when I'm able to slip out for the last half hour. Time is money to me, but in this case it's time is meat. So I got to utilize every moment that I can. The shake up this year came that we had a kid. So we are gonna go look for some cutthroat along this river. We're gonna walk about two kilometers down. These are Grizz's waders. <laughs> I don't fit into mine anymore. I keep my fly gear in my car at all times so we can just stop here on the way home. Thankfully it's light out to like 8.30 or so, so we have time to come out and it's way better than Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> this is stinging nettle here poisonous plant, but typically all the poisonous ones are the best ones. You can use it for soups or tea. You can turn it into pesto. You can actually forage this on the way home. Get our rods going, tie some uh, epoxy minnows. All the flies we fish, whether it be lake or river, um, are always hand tied. So we're always tying our own stuff. No, we're gonna do this beauty. You can kind of see it's got a little sparkle and shine there. So the flies we're using look like Little salmon fry, just imitates a little minnow. Three weeks is our due date, so it can pretty much happen anytime. Well, having kids is like super scary and no one's really ready for it. We both love to adventure so much. We'll have our weekends and just boost out on a Friday after work and having a kid is gonna involve planning and it's gonna be harder. And I, I don't think you're ever ready, so you might as well just go for it. Oh, a little trout. Oh, he's off. I also think that like parenting is just tough in general, so you might as well do it outside in a beautiful place. We need to bring our kid out into nature as much as we can. I think that's our goal, just as much as we're out there. I think that kid's gonna eat more worms than the average kid. Probably a lot more slugs as well. I have a feeling it's probably gonna eat a poisonous berry and I'm gonna have to deal with that, but we'll figure it out, you know? We'll figure that sucker out. Sometimes I think I feel a little underprepared because I go fishing too much. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Part of the excitement is the unknown. It's gonna be wild. I don't even know what to expect, but it's gonna be wild. Leg down, bud. Leg down. This is little Fraser Jade. She's our heart and, heart and soul now. Yeah, she's seven weeks old now. And it's her first salmon fishing adventure. <laughs> yeah, just opened. We got red springs in here. So hopefully today we can use her as a measurement. Yeah, she's nine pounds now. So we can compare that to a fish. That we <laughs> yeah, weighs about the same. Here we are, we're doing what we love to do yeah. and it doesn't stop us for nothing and the little one's right with us. It's harder than I thought it would be, but she likes being outside. She likes the noises of nature and she's moving, we're moving, everyone's happier and we have a little tent for her so she can stay in the shade and it took a few weeks to figure it out, um, but we're getting there. Even on the way out to the river today, we found ourselves talking about like how we want to raise a kid. This is what we love to do. And the biggest thing I, I guess as new parents is just like, don't lose your core values of who you are. Drop your Susie. Drop your Susie, here you go. 
It makes me think a lot of my childhood and how I was raised and just wanting her to get that same feeling and that love for the outdoors that we do and why we want to protect it today. Trying to figure out which one I want to start with, which one's I like. I like that one. So my fall is my main go of getting my meat sources, whether it be a game meat or whether it be uh, fish. The goal is to fill the freezer, get the coffers full. So, fill the bottom half of the freezer with fresh salmon. Got them all nicely filleted. Now I just got to fill the other half with with more salmon and then I got to fill this one up uh, with a bunch of game meat. So I'm sitting about halfway and I think by the end of the trip or the end of the season then we're going to be stocked full. So I'm pretty stoked. This is my time to, to clean up for the rest of the winter, spring and into summer. And then at that point it's right back to where we are now. We're pretty opportunistic people on our traveling to pursue elk. There was multiple rivers you cross over. Taking an hour to pull over, pull out a rod, cast into that river and hook some grayling. Sometimes it's just about knowing what's around you. Here's one. So here we are, this is a grayling. Absolutely gorgeous. This makes for great little fish cakes, things like that. Deep frying, you name it, all that stuff is awesome. Right now, this is the cream of the crop. This is the meat trip because the elk is a lot bigger than the deer. So they like to try and fill our fill our freezer full. We got an evening hunt. I'm gonna feel out the area. So we're gonna get into some areas, do a lot of calling, moving, calling, moving, calling. I like to quad out to a way further area as far as I can and then hike 10 to 20 kilometers that day, um, moving through different areas where nobody really wants to get back to or pull an elk out of. That's my jam. I love that stuff. We'll walk for a bit. We'll get in there because we've made a bunch of noise with the quad. All the way in there. I'll get calling. We'll slowly work our way out. I've been hunting this area for about 10 years. I found this area after being introduced to Northern BC hunting from my Uncle Jimmy. We're gonna post up here, just taking our time, really picking it out and just listening. See if any elk are talking, or, especially because we're coming into evening, maybe something might start picking up. I've got to hone this spot now and to find out what the elk do in this area. And it's very important to me to be able to experience these moments with someone. So to be able to bring Hayden into this and be able to experience this moment together is super special. Yeah, they're either quiet or it's just, a, it was a pretty hot day today. Not too hot, but they could just be silent. Good first day because we covered area, but not much for, for elk in this area. So try some new areas tomorrow. I got a whole bunch in my back pocket. I think we're putting on a lot of miles tomorrow, so. Back in the bush, so today, just because I'm playing caller, most likely our best chance is that I'll be sitting back calling and if we get some answers and then get Hayden on the note. Yeah, I have a huge passion for getting people's first, so this would be Hayden's first elk. I've been part of a couple firsts with you, Hayden. Uh, his first deer, his first moose, so hopefully I uh, get his first elk too. No track, like they're just not in here. There's no river running right now. All the past years when I've come down here and there's like track all over the place, the river was running. New game plan, it'll have to be a full change because I think that they're just not in the system. That's part of hunting, that's part of the fun, figuring them out, so. A lot of mistakes I think 
people get caught in is there's romancing in the same area. Oh, I had such a great day here. Oh, I killed an elk here. Oh, I caught fish in this bay. But you can't be attached to that stuff. You gotta go where the sign is. That's where you wanna be. That's where you're gonna catch stuff. You gotta just pull camp or whatever you gotta do. Just make it happen. So that's what we're gonna do. A lot of things to the wild that the only way you're gonna know, you can't just read in the book. You have to go out and put boots to the ground and learn about it and experience it. We've totally gone to a different area. Paul asked to get somewhere for the evening, try and get in there, and if we hear a bugle, that would be awesome. get like down or anything but I'll get frustrated especially when like things aren't working I think it's easy to either get down or get motivated first kill of the trip covering a lot of ground and not getting into them I just adapt that's gonna be good eat and we're gonna cook them up tonight right over the fire we got grilling dipped in bacon grease Oh, that's gonna be good. And then I'm gonna pull these uh, breasts out, these two grass we got today, and plop those on the grill as well. I use these feathers for tying flies, for catching fish, bringing more things to the table. I'd like to get some action today and not just on growth. I hope we hear some bugles. I'm dreaming of those bugles.
Watching the life literally disappear out of an animal's eyes is like a very special and heartfelt moment. It's just the experience and being able to just like revel in that and just know that I'm feeling the same thing as that person's feeling in that moment. This is why we came though. This is this why is we came. exactly why we came. I also shot at a bull but freehand so we're gonna go see what we can find that way first. So one bull's down, this might be a dual bull day. So we've been following the tiniest little blood trail and it's lost now. After two hours of searching, I really wanted to find my bull, but it only made sense to go deal with Hayden's bull to prevent meat loss. After that, the plan is to do a full grade pattern search for mine, because I knew it was a good shot. So we're gonna quarter them, get all the loins, get all the meat out, and we're gonna put it on our backs and haul it right out of here. We work so hard to get this animal that we wanna utilize every piece that we can. We'll be pulling off all the quarters, all the loins, rib meat, things like that and trying to keep it as clean as possible. Reason being, I do all the butchering. I enjoy the hardships. The hardships are the best part. Knowing that you work your ass off every minute, trying to get to that point, you now finally get to enjoy that harvest that you worked so hard for. One, two, three. Oh, feels great. I've been slaving so long, looking for him putting on miles and miles and miles and miles that when it comes to gutting them up and hauling them out, it's like, Psh, this is the fun stuff. This is the good stuff. There's no better way to be following your buddy with a big bow on his back. No way. Oh, wait. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's awesome. That's a freaking sick bull. Woo! Oh my gosh, we what a him. day. We're loaded up heading out. Hayden finds him, he just stumbles on him. <laughs> this was Hayden's first thing to actually get a bull 30 yards from his. It's just like, I don't know, couldn't have asked for anything better than that. That is awesome. I love having like that feeling of constant work and it paying off to spend something that can be so vital in someone's life being food or experiences, you know, and to be able to have both of those in one mix, that's pretty special. So I won't ever forget this. looking for chanterelle mushrooms. It's a staple of my October. We got a small window of time. So let's go see what we can harvest, see what we can pick up. The best part about this is it is just like hunting. You gotta put your time in. You gotta put boots on the ground. You gotta be looking hard. Oh, boys, we're in it. See that? That there is a shanty. That's perfect. That is right where we're looking for. They're really good meaty substitute type um, that you can throw in like stews, put it with your steaks, you name it. This is another one right here. And right here, I'm gonna let that one be because he's real small. I don't like to over harvest either. Um, as I don't like to dehydrate these, I like to cook them fresh. So I don't want to take more than I need, which is nice. We left some on the hill um, to grow bigger for the next one. This is a blast after work before I got a dinner tonight. Get out, get soaked, dog gets good energy done. I burn a little calories myself, and now I get to eat a little bit of calories with that. So, pretty awesome that way. It is mid-October, and we're going for salmon. We have all the salmon species pretty much running up right now. There's still some pinks in the system, but I'm targeting either big Chinooks or coho, preferably coho.
The thing with coho is they gotta be hatchery here, so makes it a lot tougher. You can hit wilds, but you gotta let them go. We don't wanna deplete our wild stocks. We want these rivers to be plentiful and stay plentiful. I just saw some moving up and they're kind of in and out here. I can see them running up right there. We're gonna step up a bit. I love participating. I'm out there every single day. I'm a wreck fisherman, I'm a wreck hunter, but I'm on that river every day or I'm out in that bush every day. And I love it most. I love it more than most. Try float fishing for a while. Gonna change up and put on a spoon. I wanna protect that place. The conservation, the money, the effort, the volunteer hours. Fish on! Looks like it might be a hatchery. Means we can keep these. Whatever it might be, if I can do it, I want to do it. Before we do anything, we are going to bonker. So what we got here is a little coho, a little beautiful chrome coho. This is a hatchery because it doesn't have any adipose fins. They put a certain amount in every year, and then it becomes a fishable opportunity for wreck fishermen like ourselves. I love it that I get to be a part of this and get to do exactly this. We're going to take this sucker home, cook her up. It's a great opportunity right here. So in my late season hunting, it's my opportunity to chase big bucks in the timber. And in this case, we're chasing whitetails. Knowing that I only have half a freezer full of red meat, it makes it tough to know that that's gonna last all the way till spring. We're just gonna be covering ground this morning, big time. Start looking for fresh sign, things like that. It's been a really odd year. It's been warm. It's already end of November. There should already be a foot of snow out here. There's nothing. So you don't get these fluctuating temperatures, which get those animals moving a lot more. We don't have any of that. So you really got to get into their zones. We're going to look to push into more of their bedding zones and stuff like that. Just by the sign I'm seeing, I think they're still way up top. I don't think they've been pushed down at all. This is definitely like part of hunting, being able to read. It's not always the same spot. I picked up lots of bucks literally in this exact same route before, but it was different, different scenarios. I think we gotta go to the top just from what I'm seeing, so gotta adjust. Hard pressed, we got some sign. For, I didn't cut a single buck track. We got into some incredible area, very pumped on the spot, but we were socked in for fog more than half of the time. Couldn't see more than 20, 30 yards in front of us. And we were bouncing deer. I was finding new crabs, hearing them crash off. We're in the right area, just couldn't make it happen. This is totally normal. To expect to be able to just harvest and put stuff into your freezer every single time is unrealistic. But it makes that meat all the sweeter. When you do get that kill or you get in the zone and it's that day where you're hooking up on 60 to 100 fish, filling your quota is easy, right? And you gotta take advantage of those moments. You have to be consistently going out and chasing those things if you wanna fill a freezer. Getting out for blacktail is a last ditch effort to be able to fill the freezer with a big game animal. We're down to single digit days. We're in a wicked area, it's freaking beautiful. Spotting a lot of flora that I enjoy. And I keep finding myself looking down at the ground a little more than looking up. Like wild ginger, rattlesnake plantain already. But ideally we come across a buck. We get a buck and we get some meat. That would just be top notch. best way for these tight zones 
is you have to make yourself mandatory to stop in class. If anything that forces you to sound like a deer stopping to feed every 10, 15, 20 steps. For me, I would rather have a hardship and put a lot of effort into something to know exactly what I'm eating. From finding that area, finding that animal, harvesting that animal, from the very beginning to the very end, I want to control that whole thing. And that is a hardship, all the way from front to back. That's not a one day process. And I should love every piece of it. Oh, I got the shaky leg going. <laughs> Pretty standard for me. Nice big buck coming up. Took a free hand shot because I had to poke it through. And uh, he was kind of behind the berm a bit there. So we'll work our way down, try and find some blood. Tracking game now, this is honestly the worst part. I had such a bad experience on the bull, chasing the wrong blood trail that I'm worried here. So I just need to find blood. He boogied off that way. And if anything, find his prints where he took off. And we should be able to track it down. <laughs> yes! Yes! Yeah! Oh! Frick yeah, that's a good blackie. Big three by three. That feels really good. I worked hard for this one. Not necessarily for blacktail, but for a deer this year and what I was doing earlier. So pretty freaking pumped on this. Good clean shot, dead before I could even get to him. Just the way you want it, you know? Just the way you want it. You know, I've heard it said before, there's a violence in hunting. It's not this sugar-coated thing, but with that, there's ownership. Going out there, harvesting that meat, knowing that I found that meat, I made that work, I put that on our plate, harvested for my family, to be able to grow, be strong, and do it again. That's the heart right there, what's left of it. You always want a heart shot because it really doesn't go far, it dies very, the quickest. I would love to cook that heart up, but it's okay. I'm happy with that. Right now, my uh, fish freezer is pretty much to the brim. This one should help a lot of bringing the other side up. That was at about uh, halfway. So now this one should pop it up to close to three quarter. That should get me into next September between the two big game animals and then all the fish I got. So that's what I'm looking for. Knowing that I now have a substantial amount of meat in the freezer to carry me through winter into the next season, the feeling deep down inside is grateful for opportunities, grateful for being able to grow and build a family. There will be no better feeling to me than knowing that my kid understands where all of its nutrients and food come from. I cannot wait to see all the first that she's going to experience. To be able to pursue those different things with Scotty and I, it's gonna be the greatest feeling. I'll feel like I've done parenting right, that I've tried to raise my kid with an understanding of food and it's gonna make her appreciate the landscape and how to preserve the landscape and the animals that are on it.